Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for today that we are gathered once again as your body. I pray, Lord God, that um, you will use me to deliver your message today and that you will encourage us, Lord God, with this message to really stand, Panginoon, according to the truth in your word as a denied demand in your salmon, Panginoon. I pray, Lord God, that you move me out of the way and that you present your word, Panginoon, as the main thing that they will remember today. Praise you, Lord God, for this day. In Jesus' name. Okay, this is a pretty sensitive topic, and it's a big issue. Malaki po itong topic, and I'll try to compress it into one today. I'll do my best to, kaso wala tayo, to keep it concise and uh, discuss it according to ating schedule. Okay, of course, bakit nga ba abortion yung ating pag-uusapan today? Eh kuya, hindi naman legal yan sa Philippines. Bakit abortion na pag-uusapan natin? Well, um, meron po tayo mga politicians that are running for a position at they are considering legislating abortion in this nation. Marami na po ang mga nagsusulong nito at ang pabor dito sa abortion. And so today, we are going to look at what the Bible says with regards to this matter. Okay? It's campaign season and yung message ni... Pastor Jess last week was very educational and informative for us all. Kung hindi nyo pa napanood or wala po kayo dito last week, I encourage you to watch it again sa YouTube. I believe it's there na po, Pastor. Ah, okay. Ayan po. So, panoorin nyo na lang po yun. Uh, it's concerning our choice of leaders for the nation. So, last week, nagbigay po si Pastor Jess sa atin according sa word ng Panginoon. ng biblical and godly standards sa pagpili ng leader ng bansa. And also, he has presented with us yung warnings from scriptures as to what would happen if we are going to fail to choose our leaders wisely. So, yung admonition to sa may message last week was to choose wisely. Because yung effect ng ating choices are, you know, it, it can uh, affect even sa mga Bata, no? so next generations. Okay? And in pastor's message last week, na-emphasize din yung morality ng aspiring leaders ng ating bansa. That's one of the key points ni Pastor just last week. Uh, which is yung morality ng mga leaders sa ating pinipili would, of course, become the standard ng ating morality din as a nation sa upcoming uh, years habang sila ay nasa pwesto. Kung ano ang morality ng pinuno, yun din ang mismong morality na kanyang i-act sa law. Okay? So, mag-iingat po tayo. Today, we will be discussing another moral issue na popular sa ibang bansa uh, like America. Kung familiar po kayo sa US, wala pong restrictions ang abortion. Any woman na gusto mag-desire na i-abort yung baby niya can just go to Planned Parenthood na abortion mill tapos dun na, palaglag niya yung anak niya. And they, they consider it health care. Okay? Yan po yung mga topics sa pag-uusapan natin today. And ano po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon about these things. Thankfully, sa Pilipinas, it's still illegal. In all uh, forms. Wala po tayong inaalaw na abortion sa ating bansa. Salamat sa Panginoon, pinepreserve niya pa rin ang Philippines sa ganitong matter. Pero hindi natin alam, baka pag mali yung pinili natin leader, eh sila yung mag-enact ng into law ng abortion. Okay? So, marahil dahil na rin sa classification natin as a Christian nation, di ba? we classify ourselves, malaki ang population ng uh, Roman Catholics sa ating bansa, no? as well as the Protestants like us. Ngayon, Well, if there's one thing na nakuha ng Roman Catholic na tama, no, it's abortion. They stand against abortion. Tama po sila to, no? Na mali according sa standard ng Panginoon ang abortion. And Christians today, however, do not feel bothered na may mga politicians tayong tumatakbo. When was the last time we heard a message about this matter? Do we even discuss this 
with our families and church members. I don't think we do, no? to be honest. So, today I hope na maging uh, means ito for us to learn kung ano yung, ano yung sinasabi ng Panginoon about this matter. Ano yung biblical case against abortion. So that when the time comes, na kailangan natin mag-stand up against it. Alam natin ano yung tinatayuan nating truth. Okay? So what is abortion? Medyo para sa seminar. <laughs> what is abortion? Abortion is, according sa Oxford languages, the deliberate termination of a, what? Human pregnancy. Okay? So, merong termination. Sila mismo, may taong nagkakos na terminate yung pregnancy, yung natural sana na course ng, ng life ng bata, ng growth niya sa may matres ng uh, babae, at tinaterminate nila yon, okay? Most often performed during the first 28 weeks of pregnancy or yung first and second trimesters ng um, buntis. Okay? So, ano yung mga paraan sa abortion? We have three major ways. One is yung vacuum aspiration. Pag medyo, sa first trimester ng baby, uh, papasok na ganun dun sa may womb ng babae yung uh, parang suction tube, tapos isasak yung uh, fetus doon. Okay? That's one of the ways, sa first, first trimester yan. Second trimester is dilation and evacuation. So dilation, dilation and evacuation, sorry, nabubulol ako. Dilation and evacuation, gagamit po sila ng forceps. And they will tear yung baby limb by limb. I'm sorry, hindi na ako nag-post na images dito kasi... It's too graphic. And uh, na, na, ako rin mismo pa parang natotrauma ako pag nakikita ko yung, yung ganong photos. You know? So, gumagamit sila ng forceps, pinuputol po nila yung mga kamay, kamay, paa muna hanggang yung ulo, tapos i-assemble nila sa tray yun, papakita na, yan, buo na, nakuha na namin yung baby mo. Ganon po, second trimester yon. Meron ding abortion ng third trimester, which is yung dilation and, ex- and extraction. I-induce naman nila yung pregnancy ng babae early on para maipanganak siya ng hilaw pa. Okay? Pero to do, to do that, kailangan mo nang mamatay ng bata sa loob ng womb. So, mag inject sila ng saline. Alam niyo po yung salt water? I-inject po yun doon sa, may, uh, uh, sa fetus sa womb. Tapos masusunog siya sa loob para siyang sinusunog doon sa loob hanggang sa mamatay siya. Tsaka po lalabas yun ng kusa. Ganun po yung process ng abortion no, na kinoconsider sa ibang bansa. Okay? And I fear na one day eh, maging possibility din ito sa Philippines. I hope not. Pag-pray natin sa Panginoon na hindi. According sa worldpopulationreview.com, abortion is legal in 166 over 191 countries. That's as of today, year 2022. Okay? In various degrees, hindi po yon total allowance ng abortion. Ha? Yung iba may restrictions, pero minimal restrictions. No? Like for health and life preservation or socioeconomic reasons. Kapag sinabi nila na, okay, yung life ng mother is in danger, baka pwede, consider natin abortion. May mga ganong bansa. May mga bansa din na nagsasabing socioeconomic. Kapag mahirap yung pamilya, hindi niya kayang sustentuhan yun, siguro, but then baka consider natin abortion. What do you think? <laughs> What do you think? Kasi divided even ang mga Christians sa may matter na ito, oo nga naman, kawawa naman kasi. Ha? Diba? I hope na challenge po yung ating minds even though nasa introduction pa lang tayo ng ating discussion. Ano nga ba kaya yung just na way kung paano natin ititreat yung life na nasa womb? 57 of which, 57 of those countries na may restrictions, uh, oh, sorry, which allow abortions without any restriction pala. So, walang restriction at all, 57 countries. Isa na doon ang America. Okay? Only 25 countries prohibits abortion altogether. Kasama po tayo ron. Okay? There are two major secular movements pagdating sa abortion. Meron tayo tinatawag na pro-choice Meron tayong tinatawag na pro-life. Uh, note, may nilagay pa ako dito, hinighlight ko, secular movements. Kasi kung napapansin ninyo, may pro-life dyan. Teka, kuya, hindi ba tayo pro-life? We are pro-life. Pero meron ding secular form 
ng pro-life movement. And yun yung pinaka-common. Okay? Even do sa mga countries na nag-allow uh, ng abortion, they have the pro-life movement there. Now, they are against abortion kuno. But they are against the criminalization of abortion. Parang sinabi nilang, hindi, bawal dapat ang abortion, pero walang kaso dun sa may nanay or dun sa may abortionist. Kung sakaling mag... Eh, di parang, di ba? May inconsistency doon eh. Di ba? Mamaya, basahin natin ang sinasabi ng Biblia about this. Meron din yung pro-choice. Pag sinabing pro-choice, my body, my choice. Tama po ba yun? Ah, mga tanong po yan eh. Kasi common natin naririnig ito ngayon, di ba? Especially yung mga younger generation na nasa TikTok, di ba? Tapos ang influencer sila, yung mga nasa tate. O, anong mga nakikita nila dyan? Women empowerment. My body, my choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? So, yan po yung mga cases. Actually, ang dami pang dapat pag-usapan dito. Even yung bakit ganun na lang uh, naging kalagana pang abortion sa US, even though they were founded as a Christian nation. Pero, I think we will spend so much time digging in all of those details. Kaya, I chose not to uh, detail much. No? Pero, at the common, at, at, the, uh, at the date today, There are about 3,000 deaths sa abortion since the time ng uh, pag-legalize ng abortion sa America. 3,000 daily. It's a holocaust. Ganun po, kadami yung ina-abort sa America na bata. Ganun po. No? So, kung tayo later on, mag-open tayo ng window, kasi sa US po, nagsimula lang din sila sa maliit na ano eh. Nag-open lang sila ng maliit na door. Tapos later on, lumaki, bakit siya? Bakit ganyan? Bakit siya may ganitong opportunity, ganitong privileges? How about us? And then lahat na. Lahat na naging legal na for everyone. No? So, mag-iingat tayo sa mga ganong batas. Okay? So, again, I'll try to be as concise and uh, as informative then today with the short time that we have. Okay. So, alam natin, no, sa common discussions natin, every week, na discuss din naman dito, na tayo ay nag-fall sa sin. So, itong abortion and whatever sin na experience natin or nakikita natin na ina-apply ng government is a result of the fall of man. Diba? Yung corruption kasi nung sin sa atin, even yung minds natin has been lawless. No? Na yung mga nauupo sa may gobyerno, sila mismo ay mga makasalanan ng tao. 'Di ba? Na hindi rin kumikilala sa Diyos. So anong kind ng batas ang kanilang ina-apply? Yung according lang sa kanilang maisipan at magustuhan. 'Di ba? Yun, yun naman na sinasabi ng ano eh, Biblia eh, about the condition of man. 'Di ba? So the fallen world is living by its own standard. It's lawlessness na standard ng mundo. And man has been in rebellion With God, since the fall, even us, no, hindi po natin ina-exclude yung mga sarili natin tayo din. Before tayo, kahaba, bago natin naranasan yung habag ng Panginoon, tayo man din ay lumalakad sa kadiliman. Tayo rin mismo ay nagpa-practice ng mga maling gawi. And we have been defining and deciding for ourselves what is good and what is evil. Diba? according to our personal standards or sino mang advisors yan, sino mang mga influencers yan. And let's not forget, God is a God of order. May order na sineset si God. Hindi siya God of chaos, he's a God of order. Kaya siya nagbigay ng law. Kaya siya nagbigay ng law sa atin so that we know how to treat each other, how to love each other as our uh, as neighbors no? of each other. How to love God. Diba? Yun naman yung core ng law. Sinamaray si Jesus yon To love God and to love neighbor. And my law and yung blessings na yun ay may kaakibat na curses and blessings. And because of sin, the totality of the fallen man has been subject to sin to the point na ang dinedesire natin constantly ay sin. Gusto natin yung sarili nating ways. Ayaw natin yung way ng Panginoon. You ungodly and rebellious nations with their statesmen, yung mga congressman, presidente, yung prime minister, whoever, senators, 
they legislate laws that may be against the law of God. Hindi naman laging mali yung, ano, diba? yung, iba, yung ibang law na ina-enact nila is good. Diba? According naman sa righteousness ng Panginoon. Pero dahil nga lawless sila, sometimes according lang sa may feelings nila. No? Feeling ko tama ito eh. So push natin tong batas na to. Tingnan natin kung ipapasa. Kung may mag-a-agree sa akin ng ibang kongresista or, or papasa sa Senado or sa Presidente. Okay? That are in agreement with the socio-economic interest of the people or general welfare. Summarized as, the health of the people is the highest law. As long as pabor sa maraming tao at yun ang gusto ng maraming tao, it is the highest law. As long as it's part of their interest at yun yung feeling ko ikabubuti nila, I will give it to them. Ganyan po nag act ng law ang mga ating nasa gobyerno na hindi kumikilala sa Panginoon. Okay? Ngayon, ang primary concern nila is okay ba sa tao yung batas? Kung hindi okay sa kanila, baka... try natin gumawa ng iba no? na kahit ungodly, gawin natin, present natin sa kanila. Hindi nila kinokonsulta yung salita ng Diyos sa pag-form ng mga batas na ito. And they're taking the name of the Lord, our God, in vain. By how? By swearing in top of, on top of the Bible bago sila ma- maupo sa pwesto, sasabihin nilang, so help me God, pero they don't even open the Bible to search kung ano sinasabi ng word ng Panginoon about the laws they're making. ba? Diba? Eh, tapos, kontratuhin natin sila, sabi nga ni Pastor last week, para sila mga saviors of men. ba? Diba? Parang ang, kala mo naman, punong-puno sila ng kabanalan sa kanilang ways. Kaya, imbes ng goal ng batas sa bayan eh, to promote and preserve life, sometimes ang kinababagsakan ng ating mga laws ay lawlessness and promotion ng culture ng death. So tayo, yun yung isa sa mga question ni Pastor Jess last week, what are you for? Who are you for? Are you for God? Are we for life or are we for death? Kasi si God is a God of life. Hindi po siya God ng dead, sabi ng Bible. So, we are for life. Kaya nga tayo pro-life. As Christians, we are pro-life. Pero mamaya, papakita ko po ano yung difference natin with the secular pro-life. Now, the question is, how do we approach the culture of death as faithful Christians? Let's note, hindi lamang po uh, abortion ang part ng culture ng death. Okay? Everything we do outside sa may will ng Panginoon is part of the culture of death. Even yung same-sex marriage is part of the culture of death. Why? Kasi hindi, sila, hindi, nila, na, hindi nila kaya mag-reproduce. <laughs> it's outside of the will of God na gano'n na maging marriages. Okay? Marriages are intended so that they can multiply. Okay? So what are ito? Interesting. Kasi sinimulan ko ito kanina. Eh, no? I-discuss... What are some secular arguments for abortion? Kung hindi po kayo familiar, ito po yung mga kanilang sinasabi. My body, my choice. Katawan ko to eh. Ako may, ako may karapatang magsabi kung anong gusto ko maalis dito or what. Okay? Mamaya sasagutin natin ta isa-isa. <laughs> okay? According sa standard ng Panginoon. What if the woman's life is in danger? Paano ko yung nanay naman? Diba? Nag-aagaw buhay. Okay. The baby was conceived through rape or incest. Ito, no? sa, actually, sa isang presidential interview, no? uh, yung popular na candidate na nakapula, <laughs> uh, tinanong siya about this. Sa mismong case na ito. At napanood ko po yun. At medyo pabor siya sa, re- sa abortion on this regard. It's just a clump of cells, sabi ng iba. Hindi yan tao, it's just a clump of cells. Hindi pa yan, tao, sabi nila. <laughs> the child will have a difficult life growing up. Or it is inconsistent to be anti-abortion and pro-capital punishment. Kasi, di ba kayo, mga Christians kayo, sinasabi ninyo, dapat totoo yung sinasabi ng word ng Panginoon. Sa word ng Panginoon, sinasabi doon, pro dapat kayo sa death penalty. Oh. Di ba? <laughs> Paano yan? Kasi, Tapos, pagdating sa may bata, kailangan hindi sila mamatay. O paano yun? Inconsistent daw tayo. 
Okay? Men should not speak about abortion because it's a women's issue. Wala kang uterus, so do, you don't have a right to speak against abortion. Wala daw po akong right. Walang right to ating pastor or yung mga lalaking legislator. Puro babae lang. It's a women's issue, so let the women deal with it. That's what they say. If abortion is made illegal, kung illegal daw ang abortion, women will have dangerous back alley abortions. Magtatago sila at gagawa sila doon ng mga abortion which is unsafe daw sa lives ng mga kababaihan. Mamaya, sasagutin natin itong mga tanong. Interesting po ba yung mga tanong? Oh, sorry, mga cases nila? No? And I hope kasi dapat may drive tayo no, to answer these things. Kasi ito ay against the knowledge and wisdom ng Panginoon. Kung kristyano tayong tapat sa Panginoon, sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon, tatayuan natin ano yung sinasabi ng Biblia at tayo mismo i-confront natin yung evil of our day. It is dependent to me. Eh, dependent naman kasi yung baby sa womb sa akin eh. Diba? Para siyang parasite. <laughs> I should have the right to remove it. Kasi, di parang tumor. Yun yung kanilang actually uh, case. Parang tumor lang daw po yung baby na yung baby ay nakadepend. Yung tumor, nakadepend din sa atin. So, yung tumor, pwede mo tanggalin, but yung baby hindi. <laughs> okay? Yan po yung mga argument ng mga tao for abortion. Yung mga pabor po sa abortion. So, dadako tayo doon sa may what does God say about abortion bago natin sagutin yung mga yan. Maganda muna ma-present sa inyo ano yung sinasabi ng Biblia, ano yung stand ng Biblia about these things so that pag nakita ulit natin yung mga tanong na yun, alam natin ano yung sinasabi ng Biblia about them. Okay, so here are the key points that there are there is no other God ang inong ibig sabihin nun, na walang ibang law giver. Walang higher na law sa law ng Panginoon. Okay? Ano yung intent ng law? In summary, it is to preserve life. That's the intent of the law. Thou shalt not steal is to preserve yung life and assets ng neighbor mo. Thou shalt not kill. Huwag mong patayin yung tao so that mabuhay pa rin siya. Diba? Huwag mong agawin yung misis niya and all that. Huwag mo siyang pagsasalitaan ng hindi totoo. Huwag kang mag-bear ng false witness and so on. Those are all for the preservation of life. Even yung, you shall have no other gods before me. Because God is the source of life. Kung umalis ka sa presensya ng Panginoon, pinili mo yung maging against ka sa Diyos, pinutol mo. Ginage mo yung sarili mo sa death. Okay? So the entire law ng Panginoon is for the preservation of life. Another key point that i-discuss natin, the sanctity of human life. na yung life na ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon is sacred. Okay? Importante po sa Panginoon yan. Why? Because it carries tayo, dala-dala natin yung imago day na tinatawag, which is the image of God. And mapag-uusapan din natin mamaya yung mercy ng wicked. And sino si God? In front of the merciless wicked generation, He is a God of justice. And how do we approach the culture of death? Ito po yung ating pag-uusapan. You know? So let's start. Tapos na tayo sa intro. Yay. <laughs> okay, no other God, no other lawgiver. That's what it means. Now, kung ina-acknowledge natin na God who is in heaven is our one true God, then His law is supreme sa atin. Hindi po pwedeng supreme yung state Nasasabihin ng gobyerno, okay yan, tapos sasabihin mong, God is my king. It's an inconsistency. I want you to hear yung mga inconsistent thoughts na ganon. Kailangan natin maging consistent about these things. Okay? Kung si God ang ating king, then yung law niya yung supreme. Okay? Kung man ang king, then man's law is supreme for you. <laughs> And then that, that just shows na hindi ka para sa Diyos kung ganon. Kasi iba yung tinatrato mong king. Exodus 20, 1-3 And God spoke all these words saying, at least the Ten Commandments, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. And kasabay nito, binigay niya yung law. Entirety, entirety ng law. Which means, no other god before me, no other law. Nasusundin ninyo. 
Okay? And part ng Ten Commandments na yan is yung sabi yung verse 13, you shall not murder. Sa ibang translations, thou shall not kill. Actually, may injustice dun sa may kill lang na term. Not all killing is wrong. Paano kapag may trespasser sa bahay mo? Tinitreaten yung life ng misis mo or ng anak mo? Ano yung dapat mong gawin as a man? Defend yung home. Namatay siya sa may loob ng, ng house mo? Then, self-defense yun. Dapat mo lang gawin yun. Yung mga kapulisan natin, yung mga sundalo, somewhat, di ba? meron silang justified means to enact this. Pero, ano yung totoong uh, command sa atin ng Panginoon? Thou shall not murder. Ano yung murder? Pagpatay lang ba yun? Ano po yung murder? Okay, unjust. Unjust na killing. ba? Diba? Hindi na, kasi sino may right sa life? Who is the God of life? God. Siya yung, kaya nga, siya yung nagsasabi ng ano yung karampatang uh, justice na dapat iserve. Kung merong nakapatay, kailangan din niyang mamatay. Mamaya, pupuntahan natin yan. Okay? Pero, yung murder is not a just killing. Si God, di ba? Mapatay din naman siya eh. For just means. Diba? Pero tayo, kapag sinabing murder, we are killing someone unjustly. Labag dun sa may uh, tamang order ng Panginoon na sinet niya. Okay? Proverbs 6, 16 to 19 says, There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to, the, uh, to Him, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. You know what? In suggest ng lahat ng ito, lahat ito ay murder. Harming your neighbor with your tongue is murder, according to Jesus. Okay? I'm sorry. Forward. 1 Timothy 5.22 says, Do not be hasty in the laying off on of hands, nor take part in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Tayo kinokaman tayo ng Panginoon na if you know someone who is for these things, do not take part in it. Kasi ano yan eh? Against sa life yan eh. Again, ano ang intention ng law? To preserve life. Kaya nga tayo kinakorek ng Panginoon eh, di ba? Kaya nga nagiging cautious tayo on how, how to treat with each other. Kasi we're trying to preserve their life according sa instruction ng Panginoon. Okay? So God hates those hands that shed innocent blood. And the Lord is commanding us not to participate in any of these things. Malinaw po ba? Sa instruction ng Panginoon, life should not be taken away unjustly. Hindi yon ang ating commission. No? Ang ating commission is to preserve life. Okay? So Deuteronomy 10, 12, 13 says, Israel, what does the Lord God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to love Him and serve Him, Uh, with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord which I am commanding today for your good. Ito pong law na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon ay hindi lamang po for the interests of men. Hindi lamang po para ma-steer up yung ating curiosity or dahil gusto lang ni God na okay, ito ang gusto kong gawin ninyo. No. Binigay ni God yung law sa atin as grace so that it will be good for us na may preserve yung ating life, yung ating assets, everything na ipinagkatiwala sa atin ng Panginoon. It's for our own good. Yung loss ng man na pumapatay, is it for man's good? Dito pa lang. Ha? Dito pa lang. Wala pa tayo doon sa mga tanong. I want you to question those things. Romans 13 says, Love does not does not do wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. 
If we say we love each other, then we will not harm our neighbor. We will not do our neighbors wrong. Hindi mo siya gagawa ng evil. Yung innocent, hindi mo siya gagawa ng evil. Wala naman siya ginagawa sa'yo eh. Ba't mo siya i-harm? Di ba? Evil. Ito po yung mga points. No? Sanctity of human life. We will go here. Ito yung minimension ko kanina, no? About death penalty. Genesis 9 verse 6, nung napatay ni Cain si Abel, Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. Kaya nga sa atin, di ba? Tayo, we are all sinners, may namatay on our behalf. Someone has to die, according sa law ng Panginoon. And Christ, yung namatay on our behalf. To pay for our sin. Pero dito, as restitution, dun sa may napatay, kung may napatay ka, dapat yung nakapatay, mag-shed din siya ng blood. Mamatay din siya. Yan ang sinasabi ng Bible. Okay? For God made man in His own image. Ganyan po, binavalue ng Panginoon yung life. Yung pinatay mo, it's made in my image. I have my inscription in it. Tapos ko i-regard na ilan yung life? Parasite? <laughs> Think about that. Isaiah 44 verse 24, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. Hindi po mistake. Nanabuo yung bata doon. It's God who formed that sa may womb. That's how valuable each of each of every single soul na nandito. God took part in forming us sa wombs ng ating mga nanay. People seem to forget that. That we are made in God's image at daladala natin imago day na yon as we live in this earth. I am the Lord who made all things including that baby in the womb. Who alone stretched out the heavens who spread out the earth by myself, sabi ni God. Psalm 139, 13-14, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Di ba sinasabi natin to palagi? I praise you, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Pero none of us ever thought, na teka, what if meron akong nakitang injustice sa ginagawa sa may... tao sa paligid ko. That person na nagagawa ng injustice is also fearfully and wonderfully made. Do we value each other this way? We should. We should value each one this way. Including the children in the womb? <laughs> Now, these are the questions. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. Si Jeremiah, before man siya, kasi tinatanggihan ni Jeremiah, I don't know. Hindi, wala akong alam. I'm too young. Nung kinakol siya ng Panginoon, sabi ni God sa kanya, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before ka pa man nasa womb, I knew you. Which gives it another dimension. Ano? Hindi lang basta yung nasa womb. But before even yung nasa womb, according sa plano ng Panginoon, I know that person. That's a person. My identity na siya kay God bago pa man siya na form sa womb. How amazing is that? Actually, hindi lamang po kay Jeremiah yun. No? Actually, yung event ni Jeremiah na yan, yung statement na yan, is a reflection of Christ's incarnation. Christ was formed also saan? Sa womb ni Mary. That's why Christ is a true representative of all mankind. Even yung nasa womb. Kasi siya mismo naging baby sa womb. How amazing is that? His flesh was formed there. Doon pa man sa may womb ni Mary, na pronounce siya as the what? Emmanuel. ba? Diba? May identity na siya. Doon pa lang. person na siya. 
sa womb pa lang. Kaya nga, even Christ has become a witness to the sanctity of life while He is in the womb. He is a witness. Let's not forget, He is a judge din. Hindi lang siya. Imagine mo yung witness and yung judge ay isa. <laughs> How troublesome could that be? Do sa may accused. Now, we go to the part which intrigues our minds. Yun po yung mga foundations natin, ano? ulitin natin. Ito po yung key points. No other God, no other law giver. Ibig sabihin, wala ding ibang supreme law. Ano yung intention ng law? To preserve life. May value ba yung human life? Yes, it's sacred. Why? Because it has the image of God in it. Okay? Yun yung three points na ating dinaanan bago natin sasagutin itong secular arguments. My body, my choice. Anong sagot dyan? Okay? Here's the deal. It's not just your body. It's another person's body in your womb. Sure, your body, your choice. Gusto mong putulin itong daliri mo? Walang law na nagpaprohibit na putulin yung daliri mo. <laughs> sa sarili mong will. Pero hindi will nung baby sa womb na patayin mo siya. That's an invasion of his home. Nabasa nyo kayo sa may Proverbs 24? Na huwag ninyong hahayaan na may mag-invade sa may home nung innocent. That's the baby's home. And you're invading them. Sa mga nagpo-pro-abortion. It's not just your body, that's someone else's body. It's a different person. Harming it is an intrusion of that person's life. May sarili siyang according, sabi nga natin kanina, di ba? May sarili siyang uh, identity according sa natutunan natin sa salita ng Diyos. And it's an another instance of the Imago Day. Hindi lang ikaw yon, ibang tao yon. No? Ikaw lang yung nagdadala bilang nanay. The mother's life is in danger. This is another common argument. What if? Actually po, ay mamaya, sige, daanan natin yung sa third bullet bago ko sabihin nyo actually po. The mother's life is in danger, sabi nung ilan. So dapat okay ang abortion kasi nasa danger yung life nung nanay eh. Actually sa modern advancements natin sa technology, halos hindi na nangyayari yan. Why? Because meron na tayong checks na ginagawa before pa man. At paano ma-avoid yun? Kung sakali mang hindi nga ma-deliver, cesarean section. Ang dami na natin kayang gawin ngayon no? to prevent this from happening. So, sabi nga ni Sproul, uh, ni R.C. Sproul, kung sakali mang yan yung case na pinapresent, sabi niya, it's a matter of passive or active causation. Kung sinabi natin passive causation, passive, ibig sabihin, naturally nangyari po yung pagkamatay ng babae. Sabi niya, kung naturally namatay yung babae because of that, then so be it. At least hindi ako burdened na may pinatay ako. Pero yung uh, active na causation, someone has caused yung death ng bata sa womb, murder po yun. No? That's why sa Philippines, again, sabi ko nga, if there's one thing na nakuha ng Roman Catholic na tama, it's their stance on my abortion kasi they are against sa abortion in all forms, including that case. Again, halos hindi na nangyayari yan. Very, very rarely na nangyayari po yan. Okay? At madalas, kung nangyayari man po yan, nasusurvive na rin ng women. Like I said, the baby was conceived through rape. Oh, Na-rape to eh. Rape victim eh. Di ba? Kailangan natin kahabagaan yung na-rape. So dapat i-allow natin yung abortion nung bata. Kasi hindi niya gusto yung mabuntis eh. It's against her will. Question. Sa justice ng Panginoon, sinong dapat managot? Sino po? Yung baby sa womb o yung rapist? 
You hear? Bakit mo ilalagay yung death penalty sa bata kung ang dapat na death penalty ay mapunta doon sa rapist? Why? People are using this argument. Eh kasi may rape eh. Na-rape, nabuntis. So dapat patayin natin yung children sa womb. Kasi hindi yun ang ano. Actually, sa total number of abortions sa US, wala pa pang 1% ang binubuo nitong dalawang bullets sa sumunod. Itong wala pang 1% sa total number of abortions sa US. Ganun po career. <laughs> yung cases na yan. Alam niyo po yung, mag- yung cases na bumubuan ng total abortion sa US? Dahil ayaw lang nila yung baby. Irresponsibly, thank you, responsibly, they will have multiple sexual partners, tapos they will commit the acts. Tapos pag nabunti sila, anyway, may abortion clinic naman dyan. Heartless. It is dependent to me as is a parasite. I should have the right to remove it. Totoo ba? Why? Why? Because it's not a parasite. <laughs> it's a human being. Huh? And sabi dito, yung isang argument nila, eh, dependent siya eh. Human siya, pero dependent siya sa akin. Sa case ng dependency, ang sagot doon, Well, can I kill my one-year-old? Dependent siya sa akin. Can I kill my one-year-old? Pag ginawa mo yung killing ng one-year-old, that's murder. Pero bakit yung nasa womb? Hindi, sabi nila. <laughs> Inconsistencies, again. No, we have to think biblically sa pag-answer ng mga ganitong arguments. Hindi po dependency. Ang, ang magiging reason kung bakit dapat i-allow ang abortion. Actually, ang reason lang nila, ang tanging excuse lang nila para sabihin okay ang abortion is i-call yung tao na nasa womb as not human. Hence, the next argument, it's just a clump of cells. Sasabihin nila, hindi naman tao yan eh. So, okay lang. Hindi nga ba tao yun? Si God, sabi niya, from the womb, I formed you. I knew you before ka pa man nasa womb. Hindi pa tao yun? May, person, may personhood siya. Di ba? It's just a clump of cells. Actually, science, yung mga nakiklaim nito are mostly atheists. Science itself, na sinasabi nilang standard nila sa atheism nila, says that it is human from conception, hence the title of my topic today. It's human from conception kahit sino scientist ang kausapin mo. And yet, they have the audacity to say, hindi yan tao, pwede nating ipalaglag yan. It's been debunked. It's not just a clump of cells. It's a human being. The child will have a difficult life growing up. Sometimes kasama nito yung Conceive siya sa rape or incest or what? Magkakaroon siya ng difficult life growing up. Or maybe meron siyang kapansanan. No, naawa ako, baka mahirapan lang siya sa buhay. How do you know that? Are you sovereign? Do you know everything that will happen in the future? Did God reveal something to you na hindi namin narinig or something? May magic gateway ka ba na nakikita mo yung future? How do you know that? How do you know that? The only reason why people make this excuse is because they think they know the future. Ibig nyo bang sabihin na yung taong mahirap ay dapat mamatay na lang? Kasi mahihirapan din naman siya sa buhay. It's the same argument. It's the same argument. Yung mga taong may kapansanan, ano, okay lang bang mamatay na lang sila? Patayin na lang natin sila? Ganun pa. Naririnig ninyo yung silliness ng arguments ng mga taong hindi kumikilala sa Diyos? Kung hindi tayo cautious, mga kapatid, matatangay tayo ng mga ganitong arguments. 
It sounds right. Diba? It sounds merciful. Kawawa naman yung bata. Eh, kawawa naman yung nanay. Eh. So patayin natin. Ano, papatay tayo? Dahil naaawa tayo? <laughs> They say, also na inconsistent daw yung position natin as anti-abortion pero pro tayo sa capital punishment. Is that true? Inconsistent ba yun? It's not inconsistent. Why? Because tayo ay for the criminalization of the guilty. Sino man yung guilty? ba? Diba? Kaya nga yung capital punishment should go dun sa may guilty party. Hence, mapepreserve yung life nung baby sa womb. Kaya nga tayo anti-abortion. Sana inconsistency doon. That's a consistent view. They say, men should not speak about abortion because it's, not, it's a women's issue. Wala kang uterus, so you cannot speak for women. Is it true? How did the, for, how did the baby get formed sa ano? Boom. Was it only the woman's choice na parang boom, let there be a child and there's a child? Hindi <laughs> naman ganun eh. May participation yung man dyan. So men can also speak on this matter. And that child in the womb is what? A child. It's a family issue. Everyone in the family can speak. Matanda, bata, nanay, tatay, anak. So don't buy the arguments that say wala kang wala ka namang matres should not speak against abortion. So kung ganun ba susundan natin tong argument na to, we should not listen to Moses at all sa mga women's issue. We should not listen to Jesus because it's a women's issue. We should not listen to God because it's a women's issue and lahat ng yon ay lalaki. Ganun ba yon? Do not listen to your husband because it's a women's issue. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> If abortion is made illegal, another argument. Women will have dangerous back alley abortions. So ano? Palitan natin. Okay, palitan natin. Kung ang pagnanakaw ay illegal, then dapat uh, yung mga yung mga magnanakaw ay magnanakaw in private. Parang ganun yung sinasabi niyan. <laughs> so ano, tama ba yun? <laughs> tama ba yun? Kasi if abortion is made illegal daw, magtatago sila at doon sila gagawa ng crime. Better na yun. At least alam nilang mali yung ginagawa nila. Kesa doon sa lantara nilang ginagawa yun and walang criminalization for what they do. Ano, bubuksan mo yung pintuan ng bahay mo? Sige, magnanakaw, pasok ka. Nakawin mo lahat ng kukunin mo. Ganun ba yun? Yung nag invade ng home ng bata, sasabihin mong pasok ka kasi legal naman yan. Walang crime na nangyayari dyan. Kaya nga, pinagbabawal ng Panginoon ng pagpatay. Eh. Diba? Kasi alam niyang may harm din na pwede maging effects sa may nanay kung papatayin mo man yung children sa womb. Kung tatalima tayo doon sa may wisdom ng Panginoon, hindi tayo malilito eh. Hindi tayo magdadalawang isip eh. Na, ili- na gawing illegal talaga ito. Pero yung mga nations na tumalikod sa Panginoon like the United States, they are very much okay with abortion. As long as it's for the sake of health care. Health care. As long as I feel safe. Actually, may mga botched abortions pa rin. Kahit na sabihin mong government yung nagsasponsor ng abortion and it is legal sa Amerika, may mga namamatay because of abortion. So I hope na-answer natin yung mga questions na ito. You know? Now let's talk about the mercy of the wicked. Proverbs 12.10. Kanina na may mention natin, ano, na parang mercy ng tao yun eh, na Kawawa naman yung baby, kawawa naman yung ano, nanay. Proverbs 12.10 says, Whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast. Maawain daw sa mga hayop yung righteous. But the mercy of the wicked is, ulit, cruel. 
Yung mercy ng wicked is cruel. Yung hindi kumikilala sa Panginoon at walang knowledge sa may law ng Panginoon, even yung mercy na ina-apply niya is cruel. It's harmful. Mercy na yun, eh. Harmful pa rin. Isn't that what is happening when they are invading the homes ng bata sa womb? For the sake of mercy? It's the same thing. Euthanasia. It's the same argument. Mercy. Papatay ka for the sake of mercy? What? <laughs> what? Unjustly, ah. Murder yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Unjust. Proverbs 11, verse 17. The merciful man does good for his own soul. But he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. I actually have a Christian friend no, na wala na sa Philippines. Uh, she opened to me once that she had an abortion nung after niyang mag-college. She said she wasn't ready. She was too young, too naive. So parang napapakinggan niya yung mga sinasabi nung mga may pamilya. Natakot siya for herself. Ganun din yung mga parents niya. Kinunsinte yung decision niya. So they went to a doctor, nakakilala nila, and then in abort yung bata. Sabi dito, he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. Even to this day, that person dreams of the child calling her mama. Gives me goosebumps every time. <laughs> brings trouble sa sarili niyang soul. Even to this day. And it's one of the biggest regrets na nagawa niya. No? Sa, na meron siya sa buhay niya. Now, what does God say about justice? In His words, of Deuteronomy, God was described to be the rock. His work is perfect and all of His ways are justice. All of His ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is He. He's full of justice. Is God concerned with justice sa lives natin? Yes. Because we are His workmanship. We are His servants, we were saved for His purposes. So we are therefore about to represent Him the right way. The way, ko ano yung sinasabi ni God, na He is, tayo rin mismo, we have to be perfect as God is perfect. Even though we know that we cannot achieve perfectness sa may life natin. But we are made perfect in Jesus Christ. Diba? It's not our works that make us perfect. We know that. Pero it's Christ that restores us to God and In front of God, we are all declared righteous. We are all justified. God is very much concerned sa justice. Psalm 33 verse 5 says, The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of His unfailing love. He loves righteousness and justice. Are we in the same Behavior as God is? Do we love righteousness and justice? Diba? Also, sa Isaiah, when Jesus was described as the servant who will bring forth justice to the nations. That's, that's how he was described. No? The servant who will bring forth justice to the nations. Tayo yung kinomisyon ni Kristo na mag-spread ng good news. At mag-practice ng righteousness and justice. Hence, yung constant preaching ni Pastor about being salt and light. Di ba? We are to practice justice and bring forth justice sa nations where it is needed. Tayo yung magre-represent nun as the church. And consider this, Jesus came, He suffered in our stead, He died on the cross, He resurrected and He ascended into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, reigning now and forever as King and Judge and His everlasting kingdom, His rule is very much concerned with justice and righteousness. Because He loves righteousness and justice. 
when we profess Jesus is Lord, praying na, Lord, may your kingdom come. We're actually professing and we're saying, Lord, may justice and righteousness thrive. That's why we, na people ng Panginoon, we should love this too. We should love justice and righteousness. Tandaan po natin na tinawag tayo ni God as His ambassadors. Ambassadors ng kingdom niya as salt and light. The question now is, how are we going to respond no? sa call ng gospel sa atin? To rise for justice when the time comes. Isaiah 5 verse 20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And Proverbs 24 says, Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this. Wala kaming alam. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to your work? May maitatago ka ba sa Diyos? Sasabihin mong, ay, hindi ko kasi alam eh. Kaya nga, sinuportahan ko yung kandidato na to kasi hindi ko alam eh. Wala akong idea na pro-abortion pala siya. What? We live in a social media age? Hindi mo naririnig yung mga balita about these things? Impossible. And you are going to support even yung mga legislators na yan na nagsasabing, okay ang abortion. Think. Wake up. God will hold us accountable sa pagbubulag-bulagan natin. It's a warning. If we know something like this is happening or is about to happen, sa case ng Philippines, it's about to happen because may mga tumatakbong ganyang politicians. How are we going to respond? Are we going to just let it happen? O ngayon pa lang, habang nasa atin yung power to vote, Iingatan mo and we will think wisely. The Bible says, God will repay us according to our deeds. Bakit? Because we have become accessories to the crime. We have taken part sa sins ng mga taong ito. Nagiging enabler tayo ng unjust death ng mga bata sa womb if ever we put them in place. Yung mga magulang na nangungunsinti ng ganitong gawain ng kanilang mga anak in their attempt to secure the future of their children, yung mga asawang lalaki na ang tatapang mambuntis, perduwag naman para panagutan at erase yung mga anak nila, hence willing silang ipa-abort yung mga bata na yan, yung mga botante na aware ng ang pabor sa abortion yung manok nila and yet they still vote, lahat sila nagbubulag-bulagan even though they know that is human life. They're still denying it. Will he not repay man according to his work? Wala kang excuse. May pananagutan po tayo sa Diyos, especially mga taong for these causes. This is our last slide. Romans 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. How do we approach the culture of death? Again, hindi lamang po abortion ang culture of death, but our topic today is abortion. How do we approach the culture of death? It's by the gospel alone. That's the message of hope, of peace, of reconciliation, of joy na ibinigay sa atin ng Panginoon to bring to other people. That's our great commission, di ba? Hence, sa time, sa time na halimbawa, uh, may kakilala kang like abort, for, for instance. Call them to Christ. Offer them the gospel. Present to them the gospel and the hope na nakikita kay Christ alone.
na merong reconciliation with God, na yung sin niya can be forgiven. For there is newness of life in Jesus. The gospel is the message that we have. Do we have confidence in it? Are we confident that the gospel would change lives and would save people? Kung ganon, kung gusto natin ng godly society, kung gusto natin na mag-stop yung evil ng ating day from becoming the norm, philosophy is not the answer. Psychology is not the answer. Politics is not the answer. Sociology is not the answer. Economics is not the answer. What is the answer? Jesus. Know Him. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your deeds and walk according to His ways. Kiss the King lest you perish in the way, said the Psalms. Or He will be angry <laughs> and we will perish in the way. Christ is not just that maabang, maamong tupa no, na pinapresent madalas ng ilan. He is a king, he is a judge, and he's angry sa sin. And he's angry sa spreading sin. The, ans- uh, the answer is Jesus. It's the gospel that we need to present to the, to the world. It's by the gospel alone that hearts are changed, minds, ears, and eyes are opened. Faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The Word of God. It's by the Gospel alone na nasasave ang tao at nagkakaroon ng tamang pag-iisip tungkol sa righteousness and justice. Hence, we need to, you know, meditate more sa Word ng Panginoon. If you were confused sa mga questions kayo na nauna kong prenesent, may we meditate more. May we desire more. Lord, give us discernment. Para pag naririnig namin yung mga ganitong arguments, we're not shaken easily. Help us remember, Lord God, your law. So that we can save those who are being led to the slaughter when the time comes. Can we open 2 Corinthians 5? What is this message? Second Corinthians 5, verse 11 to 21. Sabi dito, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in their heart. For if we are besides ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore we all have died, and have died for all, and he died for all. That those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who, uh, for their sake, died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard Him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, He is a new creation. This is the hope that we offer to those who have practiced this uh, heinous crimes. You know? uh, we are a new creation. There is a new creation in Christ. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who uh, through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not accounting their trespasses against them and entrusting us to uh, the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. The message was entrusted to us. Hence, we are ambassadors of Christ. In case malimutan natin, anong hope ang kaya kong i-offer? May we remember 2 Corinthians 5. 
It's the message of peace from God. Reconciliation between the sinner and God who is holy. Aasahan ba natin yung mga lawless generations, yung lawless statesmen to fix yung problem of lawlessness? May aasahan ka ba sa lawless para i-fix niya yung mismo niyang mind? <laughs> He's lawless. May responsibility tayo kapatid. May gagampanan tayong lahat for this. Here's my encouragement. Stand strong, fellow Christians. Bear witness to the gospel and do it faithfully. Walk with your shepherd with confidence, the truth, even unto death. Rescue those who are being led to the slaughter. Not just those who are being aborted, but those mga tao may nagagawang injustice to them. Will you remain shut sa mga ganong instances? Pag may injustice na ginagawa ibang tao sa ibang tao, you just keep silent? Where's your heart? Na change ni God into a heart of flesh that should feel for these people. Do not compromise or take part of the sins of others. Bring the message of repentance and reconciliation kay God to those who have taken part in such crimes. Then may newness ng life kay Christ. And according to Isaiah 1 verse 18, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. And I'd like to end my sermon With this question, naiiwan ko sa inyo. When the time comes, when the time comes na maging legal ang abortion, where will you stand? Where will you be? Habang may mga batang namamatay. I'm a father myself, so sorry. Emotional ako. Where will you stand this time na yun? Will you be against it? Or you, will you be clapping with uh, do sa harap ng mga politicians na nag-enact dito? Will you still hope for the lawless generation to fix yung lawlessness ng ating age? Will you have the drive to stand for the innocent little children na papatayin sa womb? while bearing witness to the gospel. Can we show our love for God by rescuing our neighbors na innocently being murdered o pipiliin mo maging duwag? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you Lord for this message na in-instruct niyo sa amin today. We thank you Lord na in-educate niya kami about such things. And that you are preparing us, Lord God, to stand up in defense, Panginoon, of those who are mercilessly, Lord, being killed innocently. Sa my womb. Lord, help us now when the time comes, now, Panginoon, this church will be equipped to stand firm sa faith. To live and act according sa inyong will, Panginoon, na matatayuan namin para magagampanan namin yung love namin for our neighbor wholeheartedly. Help us, Lord God, and empower us. At awa, Panginoon, may we remember all these things. And when the time comes na may mga taong nagsasabi sa amin, these things are okay. May we learn, Panginoon, how to defend, Panginoon, the gospel and your truth sa secular world na ito, Panginoon, and may your kingdom come sa amin, Panginoon. May justice and righteousness thrive through you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, uh, i-remind ko lang po ulit kayo sa atin pong panawagan kung sino po tayo dito sa ibabo ng daigdig.
tayo po hindi lang po tayo basta niligtas ng Panginoong Diyos. Tayo po ay ginawa ng Panginoon na ilaw at asin ng sanlibutan. Ang ibig sabihin, ang mundo napakadilim. Kailangan niya ng liwanag. Ang mundo ay nabubulok na siya sa kanyang kasalanan at tayo ay asin. Ang trabaho natin is to preserve yung life. Dalhin yung liwanag ng Panginoon sa mundong ito and to protect life. Yan po ang role natin sa mundong ito. Ngayon, ang relevance ng aking pong sinasabi ay nalalapit na yung eleksyon. Ngayon, boboto tayo at kayo ay malayang bumoto kung sino mang kandidato ang nanaisin ninyo. But, tatandaan ninyo, pag kayo ay pumili at hindi ninyo pinag-aralan maigi yung kanyang plataforma, we will suffer sa anuman ang magiging resulta pag siya ay nakaupo na sa kanyang tungkulin. Okay, so tatandaan po natin, ang ating mission is to bring the righteousness of God here on earth. Laban tayo sa lahat ng lawlessness. Yan ang ating function sa mundong ito. Ngayon, kapag sinuportahan mo yung kandidato na pro-abortion, sabi nga kayo na ng ating preacher, huwag kayo magbibigay ng kahit na kaunting window sapagkat papasok na yan. Naalala ko kasi sa Amerika noong time na naaprubahan ang abortion. Pinaglaban yan. Ngayon, alam, alam niyo po ba kung ano ang isyong nanalo? Bakit nagkaroon ng abortion sa Amerika? Ganito, clinical issue. Nanalo ang abortion sa Amerika sa justification na clinical um, uh, justification. Kasi para isave yung buhay ng magulang. Okay. Ngayon, tignan ninyo ang statistics sa Amerika. Ilang percent yung clinical issues? Wala pang 1%. Ibig sabihin, 99% ng abortion sa Amerika at sa Europe ay puro unwanted pregnancies. 99%. 3,000 plus ang namamatay sa Amerika lang araw-araw. How about sa Europe na nag-sanction na rin ng abortion? Holocaust, ang daming inamamatay araw-araw because of abortion. And then ngayon, boboto tayo, may mga may mga uh, li, mga kandidato na pro-abortion. Ang sabi nila ganito, si Bongbong Marcos, ang sabi niya, uh, favor siya na magkaroon ng abortion para sa mga rape victim. Kita ninyo, ang issue niya yung kawawa naman yung bata. Sabi nga kayo na ng preacher natin, anong kasalanan ng bata? Sino ang dapat managot? Yung rapist o yung bata? Bakit mong papatayin yung bata? Papayagan niya yung ganon. Ang issue ay yung bata daw, kawawa naman kasi ano siya, victim lang siya. Yan ay window. And then isang araw, magiging batas na yan sa atin. Ang magiging mas marami sa statistics natin, bantayan nyo ito mga kapatid pag nanalo ang kandidatong iyan. Ang magiging majority issue na rito sa atin ng mga abortion ay magiging 99% unwanted pregnancies. Ilan lang yung mga, yung mga rape victim. Ngayon, wag kang, wag kang pag dumating ang time na legalize na rito, magkakaroon ng mga job opportunities sa mga abortion clinic at ikaw, nangangailangan ka ng trabaho, papasok ka ba doon? As nurse, as aide, as doctors, as accountant ng abortion clinic, as engineer ng abortion clinic, may job opportunity, papasok ka pa doon? Mahalaga ba ang moral issues sa, sa pagboto natin, mga kapatid? We are the salt and the uh, uh, light of this world. Importante ito. Laban natin ito. We are not against sa lahat ng kandidato, but we are against lawlessness. Darating ang time pag legal na ang, ang, ang abortion dito. Alam nyo, ganito. Isang araw, yung anak mong babae o yung apo mong babae o apo mo sa babae ay mag decide Mama, gusto ko magpa-abort kasi may boyfriend siya, nabuntis siya. And then, tututol ka. Ay, wag anak, masama yung abortion. Hindi eh. Binoto mo yung kandidato ngayon eh.
You will eat the fruit of it kung ano yung bunga ng iyong pagboto. Ngayon, okay, set aside natin abortion. How about same-sex marriage na sinusulong ni Lenny? Hindi siya, again siya sa abortion, pero pro, ano siya? Uh, same-sex marriage. Hindi ba yan moral issues? Tayo, bumoboto tayo base sa partido dahil ito yung, ito yung cute sa yung paningin sa oras na to pero wala kang basis. Hindi mo alam yung righteousness ng Panginoon. Kung ano yung lawlessness, these are lawlessness. Pag nanalo yan isang araw, alam nyo ba, pag okay ng same-sex marriage dito, magpaparid na sila rito, kat- katulad ng ginagawa nila sa kada bansa. Magpaparid sila rito lahat. Imamak nila pati si Jesus Christ. Nakakita na ba kayo ng gay parade? Pinakita ko minsan yan sa video. Minamak nila si Jesus Christ sa mga bansa na legal ang same-sex marriage. Lalong dadami, lalong magmumultiply ka once na iyan ay naipasa sa batas because ng binoto mong kandidato. May effect ba sa atin? Yes. Laban natin dito ang righteousness. Laban tayo sa lawlessness. And then tayo, careless lang tayo, boto ko lang ng boto dahil yun ang cute, yun kasi yung gusto ng nanay ko, yun kasi yung gusto, ang ano eh, yun ang matulog sa mga kaibigan ko. Ganun ka pa bumoto? Hindi mo ba consider yung righteousness, yung holiness? Amen. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Huwag niyo yung kakalimutan itong panahon ng election. Amen. May say ang righteousness pagdating sa halalan. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo. Hallelujah. Panginoong Diyos, salamat po sa pagkakahirang mo sa amin. Lord, kami rin ay makasalanan dati. Ang dumi din ng aming buhay, ang dilim ng aming buhay, ang dilim ng aming pag-iisip. Pero Lord, dahil kinahabagan mo kami, ngayon, O oh Lord, diligtas mo kami at kami ay tinuruan mo ng kung ano ang tama sa iyong paningin at kung ano ang mali sa iyong paningin. Itinuro, itinuro mo sa amin ang daang matuwid. Itinuro mo sa amin ang righteousness, O oh God, and justice. At ito ngayon ang calling namin, Panginoon. Kaya kami naririto sa mundong ito is to represent you as ambassadors of Christ here on earth sapagkat ang mundo ay patuloy na bumubulusok sa kanyang kasalanan at kami tinawag mo, Panginoong Diyos, upang ma-preserve ang mundong ito sa kanyang patuloy na pagkalugmok at patuloy na pagkahulog sa kumunoy ng kasalanan. Kaya nga, Panginoong Diyos, tulungan po kami ngayong halalan. Tulungan po kami, Panginoon, na mangibabaw ang righteousness na wag manalo, Panginoong Diyos, ang mga tao na ang layunin, Panginoon, ay korap ang morality ng mga tao, Panginoong Diyos, isave mo po kami sa consequences ng halalan na ito. Save us, Father God. And Lord, kami na mga Kristiyano, gawin po kaming responsible sa aming pagboto. Sapagkat, Panginoon, kami ay magbibigay account and one day, aanihin din namin, Panginoon, ang fruit ng mga taong binoto namin, Panginoon. Lord, Bigyan mo kami ng wisdom. Bigyan mo po kami, Panginoon, ng lakas, ng discernment na makita ang difference ng good and evil, righteous and lawlessness. Panginoong Diyos, maghari ka sa aming bayan, maghari ka sa aming bayang Pilipinas, maghari ka, Panginoong Diyos, and let your, your kingdom and your righteousness and your justice prevail in our midst. Lord, we pray, have mercy on us. Kahabagan mo po kami ngayong eleksyon sa pagkatuwing eleksyon na lamang, Panginoong Diyos, kung ano ang nananalong kandidato, kung ano yung evil minds niya, apektado ang buong bansa sa kanyang mga public policy. Lord, help us in this coming election. Give us wisdom and discernment. And may your righteousness prevail. And now, O Lord, as we part our ways, I pray that you may bless your people, sanctify them, 
Bless them indeed, and bless all the works of their hands. Prosper them for your namesake, so that, Panginoong Diyos, we will fill the earth in righteousness and in your justice. Salamat po, Ama, sa iyong salita at sa lahat ng iyong reminders. Thank you, O Lord God, sa iyong katotohanan. Purihin ka, Ama, sa iyo ang ka- lahat ng pasasalamat at pagdakila sa mataas mong pangalan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Oh God.